Welcome to the bag sort video for the first bag of row A. And for most of you, this is probably your first bag sort video. So I will go over some things that I've gone through in my other bag sort videos that, and I apologize that if it's a repeat. So the first thing I'm going to need here is my book. And I did have it spiral bound. Some of the tools that I use in these videos are um, explained in the tools I use video that's on my channel. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the stuff that I use. But So I've got my book spiral bound so it will lay flat. And I am going to turn to A1, which is in here somewhere. And lay this flat so I can sort directly on my page. So then I'm going to open my packet. And in my packet is lots of various things. One of the things I do on these videos is I don't prepare this. I'm going to go through these bag sorts as if you do where it's the first time that you've seen these blocks so that if I do make mistakes that we can make them together and fix them together. So I've got my A1 to A6 and that's the bag we're going to be sorting. I've also got A7 through A13. I'm going to set this aside for the next video. And then I've got corners and stones and lattices. I'm going to set this aside. This is when you're going to go assemble the rows. So that I'm not going to worry about either. And then I've got two or three, two of the four and a half inch squares in here as well. So in the back of the book, it will say where the four and a half inch squares go. So in this case, I need it for A3 and A7. I'm going to take my ultra fine point Sharpie and write the block number on each one of these and then set them aside until I get to those blocks. So that way I know what they're for and when to use them. A7 I'm not going to be doing until this next bag. So this whole thing I will set aside. So now we're going to go through the A1. The One of the things that we have in here is the first time I crack open a block book or row book is I'm going to go in here and find out which blocks are modified. Some of the blocks are modified in these kits so that it's easier to do the English paper piecing. And the paper pieces folks made the pieces in the bag to fit this, not necessarily this, when it's been modified. So you've got A4, A11, and A12 in here that's been modified. Um, this back version, this is to map out your colors if you want to have a color scheme so that you know which blocks go, which colors go in which blocks. It's a 13 grid. It's a 13 by 13 grid because there's 13 rows and 13 blocks per row. And then all of the beginning of this talks about, you know, Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So you can get in to read that on your own. So when I go through my book, I then go in here and mark which ones have been modified. And I've done the A row, I just haven't videoed this, so um, my A4 has been marked, and then my A11 has been marked, and my A13 has been marked. So those have already been marked. So I'm going to set my booklet aside until I get to A4, and I'm going to dump out my bag here. And so what I do is I just dump this out and get started. A lot of these triangles are very, very similar in each of these row sort, bag sorts. So it's really critical for you to make sure that you verify the size of each triangle, each individual triangle. Just because it looks the same as the one next to it does not mean it necessarily is. Some bag sorts are more difficult than others. So let's get started on this one. So we have lots and lots and lots of bits. And so as I sort these, I kind of pile them in similar groups. So I've got pentagons here. So I'm going to kind of put those in a bit. And then I've got some larger squares and some small triangles. There's lots of small triangles in here. So I'm going to go through here and make some piles. And as I do that, I'm going to look on these triangles here. Now you're looking for something that's exactly matching these pieces. So this doesn't quite fit. It's too small. So as I go through here, I'm going to check these. Now you can see that this is not the correct size. 
so you look at this one to this one and you can see here that where's my pointer right here is a little step and it's sometimes easier to see if you line up the points you got a step here so it's not the same size this one is slightly bigger and so I'm going to take this one and check and this one seems to be the right size now there's lots of these I need and I know now that this is the correct size triangle I always lay out my blocks because I'm right-handed I always lay out my blocks top left to bottom right so that I'm not putting my hand on it as I'm trying to put my papers down so now that I have a, a triangle that I know is the right size I'm going to compare every other triangle of that same size to this one so these little tiny ones might be the right size I'm, I'm gonna always try to line it up on this side so that it doesn't if it's because sometimes these lines are thicker and can throw your eye off so this one is obviously too small so I'm gonna set all these stuff aside and get some of these sorted as I go through here because this this some of these pieces and some of these blocks are kind of obvious all right now I remember how this goes when I did this the first time I had this problem as you can tell here okay I already looked at this triangle and I've already determined that this is too small okay so line this back up that's too small to be this triangle however if you look at this if I line this up let me line this up over here it's from this line to this line this is too big for this side now this is the part that's important as long as your final block this final block is the correct size it's okay and the other thing you have to watch out for is that the paper pieces line up to themselves so you can see that this is bigger than this okay and the triangle is smaller so you can see where this is going this fits onto that corner exactly to fill this square and because of that that makes this triangle the correct triangle so it does get a little bit confusing but as long as they match up exactly to each other and this gets <laughs> this gets a little fiddly as long as they line up exactly to each other that is the correct piece for that block so now that I've got this triangle is the correct size this is the correct piece again top left to bottom right I'm gonna line this up but I'm gonna hold on to these so I can compare the other triangles in my pile as I go and it does get a bit lengthy so I'm gonna edit all that stuff out where I'm just sitting here sorting pieces so I'm still in the process of sorting these out I am verifying all of my triangles against ones I know exactly they're exactly the correct size and I'm verifying every single triangle because there's so many in this bag so I'm taking them and checking that they are the exact right size and then putting them in place and then I'm hanging on to one to keep checking so I just need one more of these little tiny guys for the corners right here and I'm also grouping these as I go so like over here I've got these little football shapes with that thing and then some smaller triangles on the bottom some medium you know all this because if you're going to sort it through everything you might as well sort it in groups as you go so now I've found all of my A1 pieces and now it comes time to labeling so I'm going to take my ultra fine point sharpie and I'm going to write the block number on every single one of these pieces carefully because they move so I'm just going to sit here and mark all of these pieces with A1 so that if I spill a bunch of these I know exactly what block they go to so that's my next step now that all of my blocks are marked with the block number I now have to mark the blocks that are going to be focus fabric 
So on here, you've got the white in the book is the background, and then in this case, the green is the focus fabric, and I'm gonna put a dot on one of them. So in this case, I'm gonna put dots on my focus fabrics because that's just what I wanna do. And so I'm gonna have this one, and this one, and then this one, and then the little tiny ones are going to be, whoops, and see, this is how you check, too. I missed marking a block piece, a one, and then a red dot, and then see these do slide around a little bit. So I've got, okay, so I got this one and this one and that one and that one. And then we got this guy, this little bitty guy, and this little bitty guy, and this guy, this one, and this one. So then I double check. So I got these three at the top, and I got one, two, three in that row, one, two, three in that row, and then one, two, three in that row. Now, the other thing I would do um, in my first quilt I had... Uh, directional fabrics. So what I would do is I would come in here and I'll put an arrow on the ones that have a direction so that I know which way is up. Because once you take this off of here, it's going to be all which way. So if you mark the direction that's up or sideways or down or whatever, if you mark the same direction on each one of these blocks, when you put it in the baggie, you can then take it out and do when you do your block prep and line it up correctly without having to lay this out again. So I don't have directional fabrics for this particular colorway. I do have specific colors per block because I'm making this on black with bright batiks. And so I have a layout that I have and I have a chart. And this is my chart of what color is what. So A1 is here. So my A1 is going to be yellow. And I'm going to mark that on my block label. I have pieces of paper that I take and write the block number. And then in this case, I'm going to write yellow since this is my um, colorway. So I don't have to look it up later. So then I take a baggie and I put this in it. And then I dump the pieces in it somehow. I think I'm going to just dump them. So I'm going to dump them in there. Just make sure they all make it. And they didn't. This is why we label them. In case they get mixed up with the rest. So I got these two guys. And then I've got all of my A1 pieces in there. And I know which color it's supposed to be. And then I set this aside and move on to A2. So the A2 block is going to have rectangles, squares, triangles of different sizes in here. So I do have some of the rectangles but probably in the right spot. So I'm going to just line these up and lay them out where they need to be. And then of course the triangles are going to be, I'm going to find the triangle that's the right size. So this size, that's the size maybe. That looks right. So then I'm going to take this and then check these out as I go. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of those so far. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I need twenty of those that I can see right now. So I will go through here and pick out the right, the ones that are the right size. These are the right size. This is the right size. And see, make sure that every one of these matches exactly. And get some of these going onto the block. So now I've got all of my A2 pieces lined up. Everything lines up to the book exactly. And I'm going to label them with my Sharpie. So now with all of my pieces labeled, I'm going to label my focus fabrics. I've got the 
inner triangles facing in and then the ones facing away from the center and then the ones next are in the same direction as that from the center here there's a rectangle and then another focus fabric on this side and then these have the one that points out in this little square and then this one that points out and the one that points out so I've got one two three four five six seven eight and then I've got one two three four so that's all of the focus fabric ones I don't need to mark for directional but don't forget to do that if you do and I'm going to stick this in a baggie and go on to the next block a3 is extremely straightforward so you have the four and a half inch square that we had at the beginning and that's for a3 and then there are four of these little football pieces two three four and then there's this guy now the the thing about the centerpiece is it's a line it's a thing to line up the center um, when I did it I didn't use I didn't wrap this with fabric I used it as a lining up thing template so I'm gonna mark these but I'm gonna mark this as center because you know obviously and then I'm gonna mark these so what this is is a w big piece of focus fabric on a four and a half inch block with four background footballs centered in the middle of it using that but you don't wrap this with focus fabric so that way you have one piece of fabric and if you wanted to have a focus fabric in the center you could do that if you wish but that's why that's there so that you can line up those footballs just right and we will go through that when we get to the um, assembly video so then my focus fabric of course is going to be the background and that's it so I'm not going to mark this as focus fabric because it's not wrapped with fabric I'll stick this in a bag and move on to the next one so next is a4 a4 is our first modified block I don't know if you can see that with my glare on my video camera okay so A4 is the first modified box. So we're gonna work from the one in the book. The difference is they don't have this outside perk. So the pieces are gonna be a different size because they stretched them out. So you wanna work from this particular piece. When you're working from the booklet, you will have an exact match. Like I, we said earlier on A1 that sometimes the blocks, the, the pieces don't quite match up with the blocks. When you're working from the booklet, they will match exactly because these are the diagrams that paper pieces use to cut these pieces. So if you have an issue with these matching up, something's off. So these pentagons obviously are the corner, and then these three pieces are obviously for this block as well. So it's just a matter of finding these four triangles and these four triangles and, and setting that up. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. So I'm lining up these pieces for A4, and they these might look like they're going to be about the same size, but they're not. This piece is for that section, and this piece is for this section. But I wanted to point this out because it will come; it'll be an issue when you go to block prep. So these are smaller for the center, and these are larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark those with an indicator of you know you can put one and two you can put inside outside but you need a way of figuring out or marking which ones go in the middle and which ones go on the outside because once you stick them into your baggie they all get mixed up and it's really easy to um, transpose them so that when you go to put the assembly or when you go to put your fabrics together if you choose to fussy cut some of these or make them different colors than these, you're going to need to know which ones they are. But definitely when you go to assemble, you're going to need to know which ones they are. So I'm going to mark all these A4 in preparation for my um, focus fabric. But here I'm going to put a 
I'm going to put uh, one. And then on these middle ones, if I can do it without moving them, A4, I'm going to put two so that I know which ones go where. So I will finish labeling these pieces. So I got these labeled and the triangles indicated. And I'm just going to look at my picture here and mark my focus fabrics. So I got my big corners here that are focus fabrics. And then the triangles are all background. And then the cross pieces are focus fabric. And I think that's it. One last thing is, as you're taking these off, you want to label the, the diagram. So I'm going to put a one here so that you know what they mean. If it takes you a while to do this block, you're going to go, okay, why did I put a one on here? Why did I put a two on here? So that way you know what you mean on your pieces when you go to assemble them. So I'm going to bag these up and move on to the next block. Okay, now, so the only blocks that are left for this bag are five and six, which are on this page. And six is pretty obvious. So you've got four rectangles left and they're all the same size. And then you got a big square in the middle. Oh. And then four squares on the outside. So I'm gonna do this one before I do A5 because then I know that the rest of the pieces are for A5. So I've got all my A6 pieces in place. I got five squares left, so they're all for the A5. So I'm going to label these with A6. And then I'm going to mark my focus fabrics, which are each of the four corners and the center with the rectangles being background. If you have a directional fabric, go ahead and mark it, and I will put this in my baggie. So now I have the A5 pieces are the only ones I have left. I've got my five squares that go in the center and the four corners. And I should have one, two, three, four times four is 16 of the smaller triangles and then eight of the meat of the larger size triangles. To be, to be fair, I want to make sure that these are all the exact same size. So I am going to check them before I use them because that is the last time I can verify whether or not I have everything the right size. You want to make sure that everything's the right size for the same block. So I will get to put one of these where it goes and then double check each one of these to make sure as I go. So I've got all my A5 pieces laid out and I'm going to label them as the rest of them before. So I've got all my A5s labeled and now I'm just going to mark my focus fabric. So I have the center square and the large triangles all around it. And then the other one that's in the same direction. And then the outside corner squares. So I'm going to bag this up and I will be done with this bag sort.